In this video, we will discuss the most common sites of the hemorrhage in brain, hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhage causes abrupt onset of focal neurological deficits, worsening in about one hour with decreased level of consciousness and signs of increased intracranial pressure. So the features are abrupt onset of focal neurological deficits, decreased level of consciousness and increased intracranial pressure. So what determines the prognosis? of hemorrhagic stroke. The volume and location of hematoma determines the prognosis. A supratentorial hematoma of less than 30 milliliter have good prognosis. So what are the features of bad prognosis? Features of bad prognosis are number one hematoma of more than 60 milliliter, number two decreased level of consciousness, number three increased intracranial pressure, number four extensions in the ventricles and number five posterior fossa location. Most common bleeding sites are putamen and posterior limb of the internal capsule, number two thalamus, number three pons and number four cerebellum. Let's discuss bleeding in putamen and posterior limb of internal capsule bleeding. Putamen is the most common site of bleeding and it causes damage to the internal capsule also that causes contralateral hemiplegia and facial involvement and cellular speech. Posterior limb of internal capsule bleeding causes contralateral hemiparesis, upper motor neuron type of hemiparesis with hypertonia, hyperreflexia, spasticity and weakness. There is facial weakness, speech slurred and eye deviates away from the site of hemiparesis. The features of bleeding in putamen are not that many but it may cause uh, Parkinsonism and hemibilismus. Next site is thalamus. Bleeding in thalamus causes deficit in all sensory modalities plus contralateral hemiparesis or hemiplegia the upper motor neuron type i already discussed it above due to compression of the internal capsule so internal capsule is a structure which may be compressed in a bleeding in putamen and thalamus both and homonymous hemianopsia also occur in thalamic hemorrhage because of the lateral geniculate body which has the fibers of the optic nerve passing through that to the occipital cortex so it causes visual field defect an important feature of thalamic bleeding is that there is deviation of the eyes downwards and inwards looking at the nose. Number two, there are unequal pupil with absent pupillary light reflect. There is vertical gaze palsy and later there is degenerate Rousey syndrome or contralateral pain syndrome in thalamic hemorrhage but that occur later, not immediately. Next we discuss the bleeding in the pons. Bleeding in the pons causes deep coma and quadriplegia. So deep coma with quadriplegia should be distinguished from the locked in syndrome in infarction in the pons where there is quadriplegia also but the patient is alert and well oriented but he cannot move or speak in that condition of lock, uh, locked in syndrome or in infarction of the pons so here there is deep coma and quadriplegia developing within minutes quickly developing pinpoint reacting pupil is a feature of a bleeding in the pons there is horizontal gaze palsy because the horizontal gaze center is in the pons next we discuss the bleeding in the cerebellum so what happens in the bleeding in the cerebellum occipital headache vertigo vomiting and ataxia there may be ipsilateral sixth nerve palsy and involuntary closure of one eye and blepharospasm, dysphagia and dysarthria and after a few hours in a bleeding in the cerebellum causes a stupor and coma why due to brain stem compression or hydrocephalus so the bleeding in the cerebellum cause features like labyrinthitis a vertigo vomiting headache additionally there are closure of one eye and blepharospasm, dysphagia and dysarthria and then there is a stupor and coma after a few hours due to brainstem compression or hydrocephalus. In amyloid angiopathy, there are multiple recurrent hemorrhages that occur over months and years. Amyloid angiopathy hemorrhage number two is the most common cause of low bar hemorrhages in elderly. So there are multiple hemorrhages with time 
and number two they are usually lobar hemorrhages in elderly how the diagnosis of amyloid angiopathy is done number one micro bleed seen on mri and number two it's diagnosed by congo red staining of amyloid in cerebral blood vessels and let's discuss the features of hemorrhages in different lobes which occur in amyloid angiopathy hemorrhages lobar hemorrhages is mostly small micro bleed frontal hemorrhages causes arm weakness parietal hemorrhage produces hemisensory deficit so the frontal hemorrhage causing only motor weakness and parietal hemorrhage causing hemisensory deficit large hemorrhage produces stupor and coma due to midbrain compression left temporal hemorrhages produce aphasia and delirium and occipital hemorrhage produce hemianopia